So I'm in Denver this week. I'm in my friend Mark Spagnuolo's shop for a few days. We're collaborating on a project for the guild. And while I was here, we decided to take a couple of days and see what we can get done in literally two days. <laughs> it was rough. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I decided to do a little sculpted turned bar stool kind of thing. And Mark decided to make this sweet gate for his yard. Mark, tell yes, me this gate. Oh. What's going on here? Well, this gate, it's very heavy now. It's a lot heavier than the original, but it's all white oak, and we're going to give it a good finish. Um, nice shiplap panel down here, mortise and tenon joints. Uh, it's heavy duty, so hopefully this will be a lot better than the one I, I currently have there. So if you want to see Mark build this gate, head over to his channel and check that out. But let's get into making this thing. We'll take a look at the materials and then get to making. Get to making. Get to making. <laughs> So I have these two boards for my stool. I have a piece of walnut that is 12 inches wide for the top, and I have a piece of cherry here for the legs. Now the cherry I have this nice clear area from this knot here down to the bottom, and that's gonna be enough to give me all four legs. And I have a few different options there. I can stack all three of them together, or I can get two from one half and then the other two from the bottom half here. I'm just gonna mark them and cut them, and I'll kind of figure out what I'm gonna do later on. Now I don't need a whole lot of walnut for the top, and I've chosen to use this end down here. It has some compression figure from this knot, which should be pretty interesting in the seat. And I see this little bit right here, and then the rest can be used for something else here in Mark's shop someday. So Mark has one of these baby jointers, which isn't wide enough to flatten this walnut slab, which is closer to 12 inches wide. But I do flatten things wider than my jointer pretty often, so I'm gonna do the same thing that I would do back home if I had something wider than 12 inches. So the legs on the stool are going to be splayed out at six degrees in both directions. So we have a compound hole we need to drill into the underside of the seat. I'm going to do that here on the drill press. So the drill press tips left to right. So that's going to be my first angle. This is set at six degrees. And then to get the angle going front to back, I'm using a little bit of a spacer here, which lifts the block of wood up off the table enough to put it at six degrees. I also have a stop lock clamped here to the fence and the fence is also set at three inches, so the hole will be three inches in from each edge. Since these legs are going to be going on the lathe, I'm not too worried about the stock being all perfect. So all I'm going to do is just cut them to final length. So with the legs brought into round, now I can work on the tenon on the top side of the legs. So I want to turn a taper on these legs from top to bottom, and I am by no means good at wood turning. So to make this process a lot easier for me, I'm going to lay out a few transition points along the length of the leg that I can set in with a parting tool so I can run a taper between the two points which should make the whole tapering process a lot easier so we get a relatively consistent taper from top to bottom.
So I told you I'm not that great at wood turning, so my little trick here to make this taper look a lot more right is part of an old sanding belt stuck to a piece of wood, and I can use that to bring the leg into its final shape, making a nice straight taper down the entire length. So I'm pretty happy with the look of the taper now, so now I can do some final sanding. So the legs are all done and ready to go and now we can move on to the top which I think is going to be one of the more interesting things because it's something I've never done before. We're going to do some power carving. So Mark is actually going to kind of walk me through the whole process because he's done this before on the Maloof inspired rocker that he did mm -hmm. and I think he's done it in the past with some other projects as well. So you're pretty well versed in you know these things right here. I could tear up some wood. Yeah. Yeah these these are really awesome. There's a bunch of different discs available for um, pretty much a standard grinder, right? And uh, Matt even asked me for uh, like a regular grinding <laughs> implement the other day. And I'm like, I don't have that. I just have wood carving tools for my <laughs> grinders. Uh, but this is pretty much all we're going to use. It's battery powered, so it's nice. You don't have a cord mm -hmm. and we can get all around all different angles, whatever you need to do. Uh, but this thing can tear up some wood pretty quickly. So Mark and I sat down for a little bit and kind of looked at the stool and Mark kind of gave me some guidelines that we can kind of lay onto the stool, kind of get an idea of the general shape of what we're going to try and go for to make something that's comfortable for whoever's butt's going to be in this thing. Yeah. And I think in the ideal world, you have templates for this stuff. So it's nice and consistent and perfectly mm -hmm. round. Uh, it's symmetrical, but I think in this case, we're just freehanding it. And if it looks good, then we're just going to go for it. Yeah. So I'm pretty happy about how the seat feels on my butt, and now I'm going to work on the outside perimeter. So I think I'm going to knock off these back corners and give the whole seat a more rounded profile, and then I'll use a roundover bit in the router to add a roundover around the outside edge. So it's late at night right now, I think everyone's in bed. I snuck out here to do the glue up because I need to get these legs glued up so I can work on this thing tomorrow. So I've helped myself with some of Mark's epoxy and I'll just epoxy the legs into the underside of the seat. <sighs> cool. So that's looking pretty good and now the next thing to do is work on the bottoms of the feet. So those need to be trimmed back to the right angle so they intersect the floor correctly. Right now they're square, but they need to be cut 
at that six degree compound angle. And there is a little bit of rock here so I can get rid of that rock as part of that process. So I'll start by shimming up the short legs so that the rock goes away. Then I can use a pencil, lay down on the bench to trace a line around the leg that I can then cut to with a handsaw. So my hand sawing wasn't super perfect. I still have a little bit of rocking, so I can use a piece of sandpaper against the bench to bring down the length on the longest leg. And then I'll also make a light chamfer where the leg meets the floor. Now onto the footrest. I cut a block of wood and cut the same angle as the legs on the bottom of it and drill the hole the right height up from the floor that I want the footrest to be. And this is gonna serve as a guide to help me drill the holes into the legs, which is a little scary. So I was looking through Mark's lumber rack for something interesting to use for the footrest, and I found one of his prized pieces of the bingo. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pull a small piece out of here for my footrest, just the amount that I need. The profile I wanna go for on the footrest is a taper out from the middle, so I'll lay out a center point as well as the final length points, and then I'll turn down the ends so they're the right size for the hole that is drilled and then work my taper down from the center down to the size of those tenons. Son would break it in about five seconds. I'm not putting my weight on it. If anybody's putting their weight on it, it's you. Whoa! Whoa, look at that grain! Whoa! Oh, I'm in love! Whoa, doctor! Whoa! See how much those rubber floor tiles cost? Ten dollars? A lot! <laughs> no, I think they're more than ten bucks. Oh, the bing is cool. Yeah, that it's really like a, lit up. It's got a similar color, but a totally different grain structure. Oh, look what you did. Look what the mineral spirits did. Oh, really? It raised the rubber. Oh, because it expanded. Yeah. Oh, nice right. job, Slick. So in two days, this was as far as I was able to get. And actually, if I had a little more time, I could make this look a little nicer. We were kind of flying by the seat of our pants on the shape of the seat. I'm not totally happy with that right now. It feels a little clunky here in the back. A little rectangular. Yeah, a little bit, just a little too much. So I think, Mark, you were saying that we could probably even come in and make this a little bit more of a steeper scoop. Yeah, I think you could here. probably lose three quarters of an inch in the back and just kind of bring it around a little bit more like that and then even taper in a little bit tighter up here. That's the cool thing with a seat like this. You just got so many options and how you carve it in the final yeah. shape. This was a lot of fun to carve, like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a cool technique. I love it. I mean, the old school way is fun too, mm -hmm. but uh, when you just get those power tools and just shavings flying everywhere, what are you gonna do about the nut buster up here? We're gonna keep that as high as, high as it is? <laughs> you always get that comment when people see that, but I mean, I, I like it, like, it's fine. I think the, what people don't understand about the nut buster is the fact that <laughs> this is actually two curved planes coming together to a point here. So this is actually cradling your leg. Yeah, that's, where your that's why this exists here. It's not so you know like where your junk goes. It's because it's cradling your leg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. It looks worse than it is. I actually, it's, it's actually quite comfortable. I was surprised how comfortable this is, having absolutely no experience with shaping a seat like this. So that's a good plus. 
Now this is going to be staying here in Mark's shop, mm -hmm. and you can do whatever you want with it. I was going to throw it away. Well, I all right I with figured you. you got plenty of room in the trash can for this thing. I actually need some bar stools, so I may use this as the model and the prototype to to build three or four more. And what's cool about this is like the whole prototyping process is like you can make a prototype and make a bunch of them from that. I mean, the joinery itself was pretty simple. You got some angled tenons, basically, or just angled house tenons going into the uh, underside of the seat. You've got a really simple footrest. All this stuff goes together pretty quickly, and I'm actually really happy with the way like the tapers kind of look, mm -hmm. complement each other. So we have the tapers on the leg, and you have a little bit of a taper here on the footrest, and the footrest is a very fine-looking footrest, so it's kind of got an elegant thing going here. Then it's all ruined by this bulky top. <laughs> <laughs> Chunky top. <laughs> It's all right. It's another we can't fix by taking more wood away. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this kind of quick prototyping kind of build here in Mark's shop. Make sure you head over to Mark's channel, check out his garden gate build. That was a fun thing to be a part of as well. That was cool. And uh, I think that's about it. So yeah. thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the bar stool, anything here in Mark's shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, See you later. See you later. Happy woodworking. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> I keep doing that. Still again. <laughs>